the characters that you've played um, and that you've particularly become well known for in America, I guess it was, I mean, it was Downton Abbey, so let's talk about that, that mm. kind of catapulted you. I, I and some friends spent every Sunday night for about four series of Downton Abbey having dinner together, watching, and our mm. kids, there were sort of six kids and we would go from house to house. We always liked mm. it when we went to our Italian friends, the food was better. And we would sit and watch Downton Abbey and almost everyone I knew was having a similar experience. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I met you, was at the State Department. I went to you and said, Hugh, do you realise how big it is here? It was just when it was exploding. You said, I don't know why, it's just a posh soap. <laughs> <laughs> Which it is. Um, and I mean that as a compliment to it. Um, Julian Fellows, uh, was a big fan of Coronation Street, which is you know, one of the longest running soaps uh, in the world, I think, um, hugely popular still in Britain. And he was a big fan of the West Wing and uh, scenes that, or, or rather shows that have tremendous pace to them and, uh, and short scenes often, usually. Um, and that was one of the characteristics of Downton, that it had this, this sort of breakneck pace to it, or rather, if you got bored of one character, there was another one coming along in about 25 seconds. So it did have that soap element. And certainly for most of the, of the show, you could say that it was about, for example, you know, tension, not violence, romance, not sex. You could sit down with your granny, you know, and with your grandchild and watch it. And, and that sense of um, crossing the generations was something that really, I think, uh, took, you know, why the show took off, that it was, uh, became a family experience, as you say. The other movie, I guess, that I knew you for, first and that I think Americans did as well was Notting Hill. Talking of some rather bumbling <laughs> uh, British characters, but I have to say I love Bernie. <laughs> and for me, he stole the movie. I mean, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant, but it was, there was, you had those short scenes um, where you, you took the film away. Was that <laughs> film for you a kind of breakout moment as well? We talked about Downton Abbey, but I imagine yeah. that Notting Hill and what you did with that role. Notting Hill was a, a, a wonderful experience, I have to say. It was my first sort of decent part in a film. It was, all of us had much bigger parts and they ended up on the cutting room floor um, in order to put the money on the screen, Hugh and Julia, understandably. But uh, we had a beautiful, it was a beautifully written script and really fun to do and with nice people and we had a laugh. Um, and I was in, a, in a, you know, a, a big budget movie for the first time and so what's not to like? I, I learned a lot on that film, for instance, you know, if you're going to do a dining room scene, um, be careful what you eat on the wide shot because you've got to eat it on every other angle. And we're doing, with, you know, as you may recall, there's a, uh, who's going to eat the brown, the last brownie. And um, oh, at the end of the dinner party. At the end of the yes, dinner party, right. there's, there's a whole there. brownie sequence, and I, like a mug, at 8 a.m. ate two brownies on the wide shot, and um, and so there every there about eight other angles, you know, that day, and I ended up having to eat these bloody brownies. And I swear to God, I went out for dinner that night at a friend's house, and they served brownies, and I sort of virtually threw up. Um, uh, so I learned I learned that trick of the trade: don't eat unless you have to. <laughs> what was it like working with a kind of real celeb? The first time you, I mean, Julia Roberts was mega, mm. uh, still is mega, but was mega when you worked with her. Yeah, yeah. Was that was it kind of daunting, scary? Did you have normal human reactions or? Well, it's quite funny because these are the days when, when whatever, yeah. celeb. Well, I can remember we we, rehear we were rehearsing in this freezing cold church hall in Notting Hill, literally with a sort of gas heater here, and we were all huddled round. And you know, it's the days when you know, there was a lot more smoking going on, so we'd all be puffing away, and Roger Michel, the director, and uh, uh, you know, with 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 the ashtrays. This is before Julia arrived, uh, so we had two or three days, I think, before she arrived. And then, literally on the day she arrived, everyone stopped smoking. Suddenly, there was no. <laughs> and she came in. I remember her coming in and saying, "You know, hi." And she was wearing, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. A, a, she's stunning. You know, of course, she's got this amazing radiance about her. But also, she's just completely normal. She's one of us. And the first thing she said was, "Anyone have a cigarette?" <laughs> so out came five packets of silk cut. Um, uh, so. Well, that's all sort of what the film's about, isn't it, really, in a way, Notting Hill. It's about that notion of, you know, normality and celebrity yeah. and, and, the, and the, the trappings that come with it, good and bad, to do with being in the public eye. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tricky one. And, and you've now been in the public eye. I mean, it must be, a, that was kind of like, like you say about the trappings of, do you have moments where you think, oh, God, I just want to be anonymous and... Yeah, it's I do. Hard for I you do. To walk around. Yeah, all all I ever wanted was to be. Frankly, all I ever wanted was to be on stage. I, I never thought I'd be on telly or indeed in a, a film or, or or be in the public eye in that way. 
Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's a strange, it is a strange thing. Um, it's a strange thing when you're in a restaurant and you know, you're aware that someone's taking pictures of you and you think, well, you know, can I just finish my meal? And you know, um, uh, people always say, um, I'm sorry, I don't normally do this. You think, well, there's two lies straight away. <laughs> you're not sorry and you do do this and I am in the middle of a meal and can I, you know, can I just finish my meal and then we'll have a picture outside or something like that. So I think the world of the, of the camera phone and all that is, has changed things a lot. Have you ever thought of playing an American? <laughs> can I hear you? No. Go on. No, I'm too self-conscious now. Please, I've got please, proper, I've got, he can please. do it. <laughs> I, no, I can't. I, no, I can't. I, I can't. bet you can. No, I can with a bit of study, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm too self-conscious now. Um, but we did do once on, um, I think it was Stephen Colbert, we were doing, uh, three of us went on, three, three of us from Downton went on, and he gave us the script, and we had to do it and do the characters in American accents, which was quite funny. So reading Robert as an American. Actually, I can't, yeah, I can't do it. My kids do in, uh, both British and American. Mm. And when they're with their American friends, they only speak American, and when they're with us, they speak British, and they can't switch. So if they were with us, they couldn't speak American. That's interesting. That's very they interesting. They don't know how to... Get, yeah, yeah. It, it's a language that belongs, it's an accent that belongs to certain circumstances in their life. So I can see why you can't suddenly turn it on. No, I should be able to. Even though it. you did a very good Romeo. <laughs> no, I'm not falling for it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Romeo in America? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Fly through yonder window breaks. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> a bit like some of your characters, and I'm thinking, I guess, of Bernie, particularly in Notting Hill, you're one of the most self-deprecating people I know <laughs> in real life and on, on screen. But so I'm sort of almost not sure if I can ask this question, but what is it that makes you such a good actor? Uh, I'm a good listener. Acting is about listening, I think. Um, and there's a Michael Caine story and he, he does it. He did. There's a lovely thing on YouTube, which, he, which I recommend to every young actor to watch. It's a, a masterclass he did probably 30 years ago now. And in it, he talks about when he was on, on stage at the Royal Court Theatre in London you know, in his early career. And um, and he had you know, no lines or whatever. Uh, he was I think he was playing a policeman or something standing at the back of the stage while the interview took place with the, you know, the copper and the, and the, and the bad guy. And the, at one point, the director said to him during rehearsals, he said, what are, you, what are you doing, Michael? He said, well, I'm not doing anything. I haven't got anything to say. And he said, no, you've got loads to say. You've got the world of stuff you could talk about, but you choose not to. So that, that in, I, in other words, keep it alive. You know, keep the thoughts alive, even if you have got a you know, smallish part. And actually, Julian Fellows brought that up at the read-through of the very first episode of Downton Abbey. He said, go and watch Gosford Park and look at Sophie Thompson. She hasn't got a lot of lines, but she's absolutely present in every single scene. And you, and you, and you absolutely are inside the head of that character, uh, which was a very good note. So it's about being present. It's mm. about being, and, and as I say, listening and reacting. Um, it's not just about how many lines you've got. <laughs>